Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 32nd annual Penn State Brandywine All Sports Banquet. It has been another outstanding year for Penn State Brandywine Athletics, full of championships, academic honors, and national recognition for our student athletes. Tonight, we will celebrate and honor all of our student athletes accomplishments. This has certainly been another record setting year for Penn State Brandywine Athletics. Seven of our teams reached the postseason. 14 of our student athletes were named USCAA All-American and 28 earned PSUAC honors. This success on the field resulted in a second place finish in the Chancellor's Cup. For those of you unfamiliar with the Chancellor's Cup, it recognizes the athletic department with comprehensive excellence across the PSUAC. We finished with a total of 45 points. We are confident that if the spring season was completed, we would have claimed our fourth straight first place finish. However, we are so proud to once again be in the top two in the conference. Brandywine Athletics has finished in first or second place in the Chancellor's Cup during each of the last 10 years. This is truly something we celebrate. It is no doubt that our success on the playing field has been remarkable. However, that does not define us. Our student athletes are scholars, researchers, leaders on campus, and much more. This year, we had 26 USCAA National Academic Team members. 45 of you were academic all PSUAC this fall. And despite the academic challenges that you all faced this spring, I am so proud that 59 of you were PSUAC Academic All Conference. In addition, we had 19 student athletes post a 4.0 GPA this spring. 14 of our teams posted a GPA of a 3.0 or better during the fall semester. Men's and women's track and field, golf, men's and women's cross country all had a cumulative GPA above a 3.2. As a whole, our department has a GPA of a 3.04 this year. This is what we are so proud of and this is what we celebrate. Earlier this month, we had one of our largest graduating classes of student athletes. 22 of the graduates participated in athletics during their time spent at Brandywine. Our student athletes made up 20% of Brandywine students who graduated this spring. We also saw nine former student athletes graduate during the winter making a total of 31 athletes graduating this year. This group of Brandywine athletes are special. You are a part of the winningest group to come through our department. Your hard work, dedication, and commitment to Brandywine athletics has not gone unnoticed. To our seniors, we hope that you will stay connected with Brandywine athletics as a member of the Brandywine Athletics alumni team. The team's mission is to provide an opportunity for our alumni to stay connected with our athletic department and student athletes. The athletic alumni team provides the department with feedback on improving the student athlete experience, as well as an allowing an opportunity for student athletes to network with alumni. This year, the athletic alumni team facilitated the creation and selection of the first ever Brandywine Athletics Hall of Fame. January 25th was a special night as we honored six remarkable individuals who were inducted into the first Brandywine Athletics Hall of Fame. I want to extend a big thank you to Vince Scrunchy, the chair of our Hall of Fame committee, and the rest of our Athletics Hall of Fame committee for leading the charge. To our student athletes, and especially our seniors, I look forward to possibly welcoming you back to campus in years to come to be inducted as a Hall of Fame member. At this time, and before we jump into our awards, our head coaches have all prepared a quick highlight to share with you about their season. 
Hello, my name is Mark Rostick. I'm the coach of the Penn State Brandywine Golf Team. Thanks for having me uh, on for our virtual banquet. Uh, I know this is highly unusual and we would rather all be here in person recognizing our student athletes uh, for their accomplishments in uh, not only the fall, uh, but the spring season. But uh, again, unfortunately, this is the hand we've been dealt and uh, we've got to make the best of it. Uh, the 2019 season for the Penn State Brandywine Golf Team uh, was very challenging. We had a lot of uh, inexperienced players, uh, and uh, you know, when we competed, uh, we just didn't have uh, the players uh, that uh, could compete at the at the higher level of some of the other teams. But to the credit of the team, they went out, uh, they practiced hard, they went out, they competed, uh, they never complained, and they did the best that they could that they could do. And as a coach, that's really all I could ask. Uh, I look forward to the 2020 fall season. Uh, look forward to the players getting some a little more, a little bit more experience. Hopefully, this summer playing golf and uh, competing at a higher level next year. I want to just recognize the student athletes uh, and coaches for the uh, spring sports. Uh, I know that everyone's disappointed uh, that they were not able to compete in their season because of the coronavirus, but. Uh, you know, we, we all uh, as coaches have a lot of respect for our uh, fellow coaches and for the student athletes uh, that didn't get a chance to to compete. I know it was disappointing. Uh, I know that you would have done great out on the field. And uh, I wish uh, any of the seniors graduating the best of luck moving forward in their life uh, and pursuing uh, their next career. And I look forward to uh, seeing all the other athletes that are returning from Brandywine uh, to be competing next year. Everyone have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and thanks for uh, joining me. Hi, everyone. Coach Elise here from the Penn State Brandywine women's soccer team. I hope all is well. To give a little recap on our 2019 season, I would first like to start off by saying how lucky and blessed I feel to be the coach of such determined, relentless, phenomenal, and hilarious group of girls. My girls have really proven who Penn State Brandywine women's soccer is on and off the field, having another undefeated PSUAC season, being four-time PSUAC champions, getting automatic bids down to the USCA National Tournament, and being the home of the 2019 USCAA Player of the Year. Each of my players have faced so many obstacles, so many injuries, and have pushed through every single one with so much class and a smile on their face. To our senior class, I would like to say thank you. Thank you for all you've done these past four years and such an impact that you've made to the Brandywine women's soccer team. I cannot wait to see what this 2020 fall season will be and to bring home another, another PSUAC 2020 championship with you. Bye. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be able to speak to you here today from my office. First, on behalf of my peers, I would like to say thank you to Bobby, Jeff, Maisha, Monica, Spencer, and the parents watching this video for their commitment and unwavering support. When I was first asked to take over this position, I was trying to think of reasons why I missed coaching at the collegiate level after spending 10 years away from the game, and something immediately came to my mind. I'm a competitor. When I said I was a competitor out loud, I then said, wait, you don't like to lose? Don't get back into coaching. You didn't have fun. But when I really thought about this question, the answer was obvious to me. This is a chance to coach the defending national championship team. And compete for another title. Well, it wasn't going to be easy. My first meeting with that national championship team last spring, we only had nine returning players. Great group of guys that wanted to get to work and start right away. During the, during the first training session, I saw they were hard workers that wanted to win and wanted to be more than just players. They were outstanding student athletes, but more importantly, they were also Brandywine soccer ambassadors. That's right, the returners, Maisha and myself, recruited Wayne in the summer, brought in a team of 34 players for the preseason. During preseason, the team trade hard and were open with my voice, system, and style. It probably took us about a month to figure everything out with a record of three, four, and one, right on time for conference play. That's when we decided to change things around. Our formation attack, we inserted new players in the lineup and changed the rotation. It clicked. We had an amazing October and November. We only let in three goals. We made a run right into the conference championship game against Beaver. The game was truly one of the most entertaining games I was ever part of. After dominating the game, we found ourselves down real late um, in that game, and we had to score two corner kick goals in the late stages. 
to win that to win that conference championship. The game was been watched by a couple hundred viewers. I send this game to all recruits as a recruiting tool, but that game was a true testament to this team. They never stopped competing. Injuries, refs, or elements would not stop this team from playing hard to the end. Our season ended in nationals where we just didn't have any luck that night to score, but throughout the whole season, the 2019 Brandywine men's soccer team, with targets on their back, never took anything for granted and competed every game. Personally, words cannot express how much the season meant to me and how difficult it will be to replace our two seniors, Stevie and Roe, and the eight sophomores moving on to the adventures of main campus. You'll all be missed. This team will be missed. Thanks for a wonderful season. Thanks to my coach and staff. Be safe and cheers. Thank you. Another year is over and what a wonderful year it has been. We had our share of successes. Most notably, we had a healthy season. We had very few injuries and almost all of our players were able to compete in each game we played. Our team worked hard and we were able to secure second place in the East for playoffs. Although we did not win a championship, we walked away with a stronger family team bond. Besides making it to the semifinals, statistically, we finished top 10 in the conference for hitting percentage, kills, aces, assists, and digs, and top five for team blocks. Our coaching staff and team would like to first say thank you to the entire athletic department, Penn State staff, administration, and professors for everything you do all year long. We would surely be lost without all of your support, guidance, and leadership. As we say goodbye to another year, we must now also say goodbye to our three seniors. We wish we could be there in person to celebrate all of your accomplishments over the last four years, but since we can't, we want to say thank you to them for leading by example. You truly set the bar high with your dedication to our program. Good luck in this next phase of your life. We know that you will excel in whatever your life journey has in store for you. To our returners, although we are all making difficult adjustments in our daily life, we are excited to see how you utilize this extra time to better yourself for the good of the team. We know it is hard right now, but those athletes that figure out how to make this time work for them will be the ones who rise to the top. Thank you all, and we look forward to being on the court with you very soon. Hi, this is Coach Sanville. I'm your track and field and cross country coach here at Penn State Brandywine. Just wanted to give you a little recap on what our season has looked like. Um, our cross country team did very well back in the fall. Uh, we had a home meet here for the first time in a couple years where we had 13 colleges come and compete. Uh, on the men's side, our team finished in second place, just right behind Penn State Fayette. So that was really exciting. And then Catherine Mooney actually finished number one overall on the women's side. So she uh, came in first place. That was really exciting. Uh, and then when we went out to Mont Alto later in the year for our conference meet, um, she repeated that. So that was really awesome to have a PSUAC individual championship on the cross country side. Our men came in second as well out there. Um, but then when we went down to nationals, we brought home two all Americans with us. So that was really exciting. Brian Abel and Catherine Mooney finished 13th and 14th place uh, in their heats down at nationals. So that was pretty cool. And then for indoor track, we started the season off really strong at Princeton. Uh, we went out there for an invitational in early December where we competed at a very high level against Division I and Level II talent. Um, so that was really exciting to get that experience right out of the gate. And then as the season progressed, uh, we were really excited with the direction we were headed before this quarantine happened, as you guys know. Um, and then uh, we actually finished up at University Park where we ran a really great race. We set a bunch of school records. Um, we have records all over the place now, throwing, sprinting, uh, even some of our distance events indoors. So that's really exciting. Looking forward to next year and our incoming class. And I think we can do really, really well. We're looking forward to uh, starting off our next cross country season strong if that's in the cards for us. So we're hoping to uh, get back soon. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to start by just thanking uh, the athletic department for all the hard work you guys put in. Um, Bobby, Jeff, Maisha, Monica, and Spencer. I just wanted to shout you guys out. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we can, you know, on and off the court and perform at, you know, such a high level against all the other teams in the PSU, UAC, and out of conference. Um, so definitely want to shout you guys out. Uh, I'd also like to uh, just thank my coaching staff and all the hard work that those guys put in, uh, Mike TB and uh, Richard. You know, you guys definitely um, help me out and make me a better coach. 
And most importantly, we want to thank our players and our managers uh, just for showing up every day, you know, working hard regardless of win or lose. Um, it's not the results that we plan to have for this year, but um, we have a, a lot to look forward to going into next year. And, um, you know, the, the groundwork that these seniors have laid for our underclassmen, you know, we're excited about the future and looking forward um, to this upcoming year. But uh, that wouldn't be possible without the senior class and all the hard work that they've they've done to show these underclassmen how it's supposed to be done. Um, so thanks for everybody. We're looking forward to a, a successful 2021 season. Thank you. Hey, y'all. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, here to talk about the 1920 women's uh, basketball team. Women's basketball team finished 20 and 8 uh, this season. Made it all the way to the conference championship game where we lost to eventual national champion uh, Penn State Beaver by two points. Uh, the season was overall a great season for the young ladies. Uh, they worked as hard as they possibly could. Um, to see, we didn't expect to win 20 games this year. Actually, as a coaching staff coming into the season, we probably thought we would be close to being 500. Um, the girls did a great job of um, practicing hard every day to make sure that we got to the point that we got to. Uh, we were undefeated at home. We were 12-0 and at home. Uh, the month of December, uh, we were 6-0, and and the month of February, we were 9-0. Um, th those uh, months helped us uh, get to those uh, 20 wins. I'd like to uh, put a shout-out to Nikki Velez, who uh, is the all-time leading scorer now at Penn State Brandywine. Uh, she had a great um, four years at Brandywine. Also, Madison D'Ambrosio, a senior, she had a great four years as well at Brandywine. Uh, both of them won two championships their freshman and sophomore year. Um, the senior class finished eight, 82 and 31. Um, that's a pretty good uh, winning percentage. I um, hope everyone's staying well. All right, bye. Hi, my name is Lauren Pescator, and I'm the head men's and women's tennis coach. I joined the Penn State family just before winter break, so unfortunately, I do not have much to say about the fall season, but I do wanna talk a little bit about the spring season. When I first joined Penn State, the team was so welcoming and helpful, and that's something I will never forget. However, our season didn't quite get to take off in the way that we would have liked for it to, to have happened. In doing so, we did get one match in for the men's, and although we did not come out victorious in the end, it was a great effort by the team as a whole. Unfortunately, the women did not get to get a match in before then, but they were certainly working hard at every practice. When it comes to personalities on the team, I could not have been happier to get such a great group of athletes to coach between the leadership that they demonstrated, the welcoming personalities and attitude. It was a great transition and it leaves me very hopeful for the future of the team. I don't have much to add to that, unfortunately, but I can say that I very much am looking forward to next season and the growth of our team. I do wanna say thank you and good luck to Steve DeCipio who will be leaving us and graduating this year. And other than that, See you all next season. Hello, everybody. Uh, just want to say I hope everybody has been uh, safe in these last few months with this terrible virus we have going on. And uh, it's time for me to, to give my little view of my softball team after 11 games. Um, this was this was definitely a difficult season for us. As, as we got back from Florida, that's when we officially heard that we were going to be done for the year and uh, we had just been playing some really good softball winning our our last two out of three in Florida and and we just had a good feel about our team and I and I just feel like this was going to be a special year for us uh, you know I feel I feel bad for our once our one lone senior Nikki Velez who's been a superstar at our school in both basketball and softball and I feel really bad for her we also have a few other girls who are going to be leaving us after the two plus two program, and we're going to we're going to sorely miss those guys too. Um, but on the positive side, we we do have some very talented players uh, that are going to be back next year, and they you know and and our future is bright. I mean you know this year this year it's 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 I can't name I can't name everybody, but we've had some really good moments in a short period of time, and um, it's. 
it's really tough to see the way the season went. But our softball program is 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 on the uprise as it always is. And I, you know, I really want to thank the parents for their continued support, our friends for support, our athletic office for all the support they've given us. And um, Lindsay Del Vecchio, my assistant, she's she's even gotten better as an assistant coach. And I appreciate Lindsay all the her hard work she's put in. And it was just it was just the tip of the iceberg where we were really coming on strong. And it's a shame it had to end this way. But all in all, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the kids the way they stuck in there. The competition that we played was tough. And I know these kids are all going to be ex excited for next year. And you know we have we have some we have some great upperclassmen for next year, and we have a great freshman class coming in next year. And uh, I just wanted to let let the girls know how much I missed them. And uh, you know, hopefully next year we'll be able to play a full season. All right, but our our program is a special program. We won five straight titles. And our, our goal was to win a sixth consecutive conference championship and go on to nationals where I thought we were really prepared this year. And uh, like no other year to get to get to the nationals, we had to pitch in, you know, to go along with our defense and our hitting. And it, it, it's a shame it had to end this way. But I hope everyone enjoys their summer and uh, we'll, we'll see you guys all back next year. All right. Love you guys. Hello, all. Coach Dan here. I uh, hope this message finds everybody safe and healthy. Um, you know, 2020 didn't go as according to plan after all the hard work and late nights that we put in uh, with the baseball program. Um, you know, COVID-19 had some other plans, uh, unfortunately. Um, saw some pretty cool things in 2020, though, from the, in the quarter of a season that we had. Uh, Brian Reynolds having his 100th career hit. Um, Joe Hurley with one of the best performances an all-around baseball players had in our program, uh, going in a doubleheader, going six for seven with uh, four RBIs, two triples, and threw a complete game in game one with 12 strikeouts, which tied Coach Miz's record uh, for strikeouts in a game. Uh, I want to thank our seniors, uh, Brian Reynolds, um, Ben Mutz. They'll both be back next year. We're very excited to have them back, taking advantage of their extra year of eligibility. Uh, for Sean Donahue, Tommy Donahue, and um, Kevin Sessa, who are, are moving on, we thank you for, you know, all that you guys did for the program. You guys are exactly what it is that we're looking for in our program. Uh, to our uh, captains, uh, Hayden, Ricky, Nick Wright, Brian, and Kevin, thank you. You made my job easier. Uh, it's all a coach can ask for from a captain is to make his job easier, and you guys did that. I want to thank the athletics department for all that they did. Uh, for us, uh, for the baseball program, especially with helping prepare for Florida and Jeff and Maisha coming to Florida and helping drive vans around and everything. So, uh, Monica, thank you for all you do, and Spencer, you as well. Um, guys, let's get better. You know, we can't. We're not gonna. We're not going to um, build a, a successful championship winning program unless we get better every day. So we'll fight through this. We're going to battle through this. This is just a, a bump in the road. Uh, the path to success is is a windy and up and down road. So we're going to find our way through this. Um, without a doubt, just have some faith. Um, that's all I got. Thanks guys. Good luck. Thank you to all of our head coaches for their dedication to their programs and student athletes. We have a special group of coaches. As you can tell, they put a lot of hard work and passion into their programs. They are here because they love it. At this time, we are going to move on to our awards portion of the banquet. The first set of awards are PSUAC honors. Our first award for the night is Academic All PSUAC. PSUAC Academic All Conference honors are students who received a 3.0 GPA during their season of competition.
Our next award are PSUAC All-Conference Selections. These are voted on by coaches across the Penn State University Athletic Conference. These students represent the best of the best in their particular sport. First, our PSUAC Honorable Mention Selections. From men's soccer, Evan Mazurzak. From women's soccer, Rachel Weir. From volleyball, Brandy James and Rebecca Gonzalez. From women's basketball, Madison D'Ambrosio and Amanda Floyd. And from men's basketball, Bryce Baruch and Keetwan Gatewood. And now our second team, all PSUAC selections. All from men's soccer, Juan Guerrero, Alex Lopez, Ben Serafinas, Dom Scarvano, and Tyler Scare. And lastly, representing first team all PSUAC, these student athletes were voted on as the best in their particular sport. From cross country, Brian Abel, Catherine Mooney, and Alex Rosenberry. From men's soccer, Axel Ion Ortiz, Gavin Birch, Joey Carey, and Ronaldo Cali. From women's soccer, Brianna Banks, Emily Bush, Avery Florschutz, and Meltem Ozdemir. From volleyball, Gianna Anthony, Hannah Serafinas. From women's basketball, Nikki Velez, and from men's basketball, Pat Gallagher. With our spring season abruptly coming to an end, the PSUAC put together a spring all-senior team for our spring athletes. First from softball, Nikki Velez. From baseball, Kevin Sessa, Brian Reynolds, and Ben Mutz. Moving on to our specialty awards. First up, PSUAC and USCAA Player of the Week. Next up, Conference Player of the Year honors. This year, we had the most PSUAC Player of the Year honors in Brandywine Athletics history with five. PSUAC Player of the Year honors signifies that our athletes are the best in the conference in their particular sport. This award is also voted on by coaches across the conference. First, in women's cross country, the PSUAC individual champion, Catherine Mooney. For men's soccer, defensive player of the year, Axel Ortiz. In women's soccer, player of the year, Brianna Banks. And lastly, in women's basketball, player of the year, and also defensive player of the year, Nikki Velez. Coach of the Year honors are equivalent to Player of the Year. This year, we had one coach claim Coach of the Year honor in their respective sport. That was Coach Elise Pratt in women's soccer. Career achievements are something we love to celebrate because we know how dedicated our student athletes are to improving themselves and crafting their game. We had five student athletes reach significant milestones during this year. First, Brianna Banks, women's soccer player, recorded her 200th career point on September 21st. A week later, on September 30th, she scored her 100th career goal. Brianna has become the most decorated women's soccer player in Brandywine's history. Our second milestone came on January 17th when women's basketball player Nikki Velez set our all-time scoring record in women's basketball. Nikki ended her career with 1,800 points. Our next milestone came on February 21st 
when junior men's basketball player Keaton Gatewood scored his 1,000th career point on the road at Penn State Mont Alto. Our last two milestones were able to be accomplished despite their season being canceled. Junior Rachel Cherubini recorded her 100th career hit in softball on March 8th down in Florida. Senior baseball captain Brian Reynolds also was able to accomplish this same milestone of 100 hits just one day later. This was two days shy of Brian's last career game. We are so incredibly proud of our athletes and their hard work and the dedication that they put into their sport. Next, attending a national championship tournament is a remarkable experience for our student athletes to compete against the best of the best in the USCIA. This fall, we had a student athlete recognized on the all tournament team during their national championship trip. Freshman soccer player Nate Bowman was named to the USCAA All-Tournament team. Switching gears, our next award is USCAA National Academic Team. The USCAA National Academic Team are student athletes who are sophomores, juniors, or seniors who entered their season of competition with a 3.5 GPA or better. Academic success is our number one priority for our student athletes, and we are so proud of our academic national team members. From cross country, Brian Abel, Ryan Cassidy, and Catherine Mooney. From men's soccer, Joey Carey, Stevie DiCipio, and Dom Scrivano. From women's soccer, Brianna Banks, Angelina Marulis, Kayla Pun, and Rachel Weir. From women's basketball, Amelia Brooks and Ali Gianna Carrios. From softball, Rachel Cherubini, Cara Fabiano, Hallie Grassi, and Fiona Warren. From baseball, Sean Donahue, Tom Donahue, Joe Hurley, Nick Kudaferis, and Ben Mutz. From tennis, Victor Facara and Stevie DiCipio. And from track and field, Caleb Madison, Brian Abel, Ryan Cassidy, and Catherine Mooney. In addition to national academic team recognition, we had a handful of our student athletes who also received USCAA All-American honors. This is the most All-Americans we've received in one year during our fall and winter seasons. First, second, and honorable mention honors are voted on by coaches from around the USCAA. First up, USCAA honorable mention selections. From men's soccer, Tyler Scare and Alex Lopez. From women's soccer, Avery Florschutz. From volleyball, Gianna Anthony and Brandy James and from men's basketball, Pat Gallagher. Our USCAA second team selections from cross country, Brian Abel and Catherine Mooney. From men's soccer, Ian Rowling. And from women's soccer, Emily Bush and Rachel Weir. And our USCAA first team selections from men's soccer, Axel Ion Ortiz. From women's soccer, Brianna Banks. And women's basketball, Nikki Velez. This next award is the first time a Brandywine student athlete has ever received this award. And I am thrilled to share that we have two of them. The USCAA recognizes the National Player of the Year in each sport. This player is voted on by coaches around the USCAA and recognized as the best in the nation. From women's soccer, Brianna Banks. And in women's basketball, Nikki Velez. 
This next award is a top academic and athletic honor for our student athletes. Jeff spends countless hours writing nominations for our deserving student athletes. This award is voted on by a panel of sports information directors from the more than 30 colleges and universities in the Philadelphia area. This year, we had two recipients. From women's cross country, Catherine Mooney. From women's soccer, Brianna Banks. Our last specialty award is the John Fritz Sportsmanship Award. The John Fritz Sportsmanship Award is named in honor of John Fritz, retired commissioner of the Penn State University Athletics Conference. This award is given in an honor to a student in each sport who represents the values that the former commissioner, John, holds near and dear to his heart. From men's cross country, Ryan Cassidy. From women's cross country, Catherine Mooney. From men's soccer, Stevie DiCipio. From women's soccer, Amanda Burnins. From volleyball, Madison Swenson. From golf, Brad Dawson. From men's basketball, Bryce Baruch. From women's basketball, Nikki Velez. From softball, Cara Fabiano. From baseball, Brian Reynolds, from track and field, Luca DiPrano, and from tennis, Stevie DiCipio. Brandywine athletes, at our orientation this past fall, we announced a new annual team GPA contest we were implementing. As promised, the team with the highest cumulative GPA for the year would be announced at our end of the year banquet and would be celebrated. I don't think that it is a coincidence that we had the highest department GPA this year. I love your competitiveness that goes beyond the playing field. It was very close, but the team with the highest GPA this year was men's tennis with a 3.4. I am extremely proud of all of our athletes and their hard work and dedication in the classroom. Moving on to our Brandywine Awards, our first award is Outstanding Contribution to Athletics. The recipients of this award are not always the best player on their team, but almost always are the best teammate. The plaque on our wall documents the history of our program and lists awardees going back to 1968. At this time, I would like to recognize the 2019-2020 awardees. From volleyball, Amanda Floyd and Brandy James. From women's soccer, Brianna Banks and Angelina Morales. From men's soccer, Tyler Scare and Brandon Rochester. From golf, Colin Shane. From men's tennis, Stevie DiCipio from women's tennis, Victoria Harrell. From men's cross country, Alex Rosenberry. From women's cross country, Catherine Mooney. From women's basketball, Allie Gianna Carrios and Amelia Brooks. From men's basketball, Bryce Baruch and Pat Gallagher. From baseball, Brian Reynolds and Ben Mutz. From softball, Cara Fabiano and Alexa Galley. From men's track and field, Luca DiPrano, and from women's track and field, Angel Asdemois. Before we move on to our last three awards for the evening, we would like to take a second to recognize a very special person's contribution to Brandywine Athletics. This year, we celebrate the milestone of 25 years of service to our department, to our loyal friend, Vince Scrunchy. Vince was a student at then Penn State Delco in the 90s, graduating in our first ever four-year graduation class in 1998. During his time as a student, he began working in the athletic department under then athletic director Tiz Griffith. Since graduating, Vince has remained connected with the department 
through his role at the basketball scores table, and through additional involvement. What Vince does during our home basketball games is nothing short of amazing. He completes the role of two people manning our shot clock and also scoreboard at the same time. In addition, Vince has played a huge role in implementing the Brandywine Athletics Hall of Fame. His service to the department is appreciated more than he knows. Thank you, Vince, for your 25 years of service, and we look forward to many more years to come. At this time, we will move on to our last three awards for the evening. These three perpetual awards are dedicated to three former Brandywine community members whose lives were tragically cut short. Michael Medichini, Jimmy King, and Lloyd Vernon were students, athletes, coaches, mentors, and friends. Their dedication to their team, teammates, and players set them apart from their peers. To honor their legacy, we've created awards in their name. The first award is the Michael Medichini Service Award, which recognizes service and the support of athletics at Penn State Brandywine. Michael was a superstar basketball player here at then Penn State Delco in the 90s. After graduation, he returned to campus to coach the team. Michael was a kind soul that was loved by all. This award is given in his honor annually to faculty, staff, coaches, students, or even entire departments who, like Michael, have contributed selflessly to Penn State Brandywine Athletics and have displayed consistent dedication to our student athletes. The winner of the Michael Medichini Service Award is a neighbor in the community who has given a lot of his time to the Penn State Brandywine Athletics Department during the last six years. If you attended a home volleyball or basketball game during that time, you've probably seen him working at the scores table. He works as the official scorekeeper at each home volleyball and basketball game. He often comes early and stays late to help us with setup and breakdown of each game. In addition, he has become a partner in the Brandywine Athletics annual Night with the Pride. Through his work with the Delaware County's Visitors Bureau, he has helped the committee in securing sponsorships for the Night with the Pride and ideas to improve our annual event. Always outgoing and in a positive mood, he has created relationships with most of the coaches in the athletic department. I am so happy to present the 2020 Michael Menachini Service to Athletics Award to our friend, Steve Byrne. Our next award is the Lloyd Vernon Heart of the Lion Award. This is a memorial award to commemorate the life and devotion of Brandywine's former tennis student athlete and coach, Lloyd Vernon. Lloyd was a student at Penn State Delco and graduated from Penn State University Park in 1980. In 2010, Lloyd took over the reins of our tennis program after recently outliving doctor's projections following his cancer diagnosis. Lloyd always felt that he was the luckiest man alive and never let his cancer get in his way. Lloyd was a proud Penn Stater who never forgot where he came from and devoted his time and energy to being a Brandywine builder. The Lloyd Vernon Heart of a Lion Award is given each year to an athlete who exemplifies Lloyd's pride in Brandywine, his work ethic, his kindness, and his joy for life. The 2020 winner of the Lloyd Vernon Heart of the Lion Award earned a spot on his team after impressing the coaching staff during a summer league prior to his freshman season. He entered his first season at Brandywine as an undersized guard and saw some playing time, mostly as a reserve. After a coaching change, he saw very little action during his sophomore season, playing in only six games. 
Rather than complain about playing time or quit the team, he worked hard over the summer to earn a starting role. Playing for his third head coach in three years, he became one of the most improved players in the Penn State University Athletic Conference during his junior year at Brandywine. Once again, he spent countless hours every day last summer at Brandywine working out in the fitness center and working on his game in the gym. That hard work paid off as he became one of the top scorers in the PSUAC, an all-conference selection, and a USCAA All-American. And most importantly, he became a team leader and someone that everyone could count on in a time of crunch. Not only did he work hard at his game for four years, he worked extremely hard to improve in the classroom as well. Between the end of his freshman year and now, his GPA increased significantly. In addition to completing his internship this spring, he took six classes in order to finish his degree in four years. And we are so proud to say that as of earlier this month, he is now a Penn State graduate. Just like Lloyd, this student athlete has put so much dedication, hard work, and passion into Brandywine Athletics over the last four years. The 2020 Lloyd Vernon Heart of the Lion Award winner goes to senior men's basketball player, Pat Gallagher. Our last award for the evening is the highest award given by Penn State Brandywine to our top student athlete. Jimmy King also played basketball at Penn State Delco in the mid 90s. He was a team leader, outstanding student academically, and loved being a part of Penn State. Tragically, his life was cut short in a car accident before he could reach his full potential. We celebrate his life and legacy yearly by awarding our top student athlete the James King Award. This award recognizes players who, like Jimmy King, are outstanding students, athletes, and leaders. The recipient of our award is a two-sport student athlete at Penn State Brandywine who competed in four seasons of men's soccer and men's tennis on campus. As a member of the men's soccer team, he won four PSUAC championships and was a member of the 2018 squad that won the USCAA National Championship. During the last four seasons, he was an all-conference honorable mention midfielder and defender who played in 77 total matches as a three-year starter. He recorded four goals and 13 assists. A two-year captain, he is the only male student athlete in Brandywine history to have played four years without losing a single PSUAC game. Also a two-year team captain of the tennis team, he compiled an overall record of 30 and 15 during the last four years. He went 16 and two, including a nine and O mark in singles matches, leading Brandywine to a record of eight and three against NCAA Division III competition. He was Brandywine's 2019 Men's Soccer recipient of the John Fritz Sportsmanship Award. He also is a seven-time PSUAC All-Academic Team honoree and will receive his third USCAA National Academic Team Award this spring. He owns a 3.6 GPA in Letters, Arts, and Sciences, concentrating in Earth Science and Environmental Studies. He just recently joined the Penn State Brandywine Alumni Society as he graduated earlier this month. Outside of athletics, he's been working on research with Dr. Laura Gurton, Professor of Earth Science, during his time at Brandywine. He conducted a year-long project investigating the impact of rock salt placed on campus walkways and parking lots on water chemistry of streams that ran through Brandywine's campus. At the conclusion of his research, he presented his findings at conferences both locally and regionally. In April 2019, 
He was honored with the GeoCor Award for Excellence in Student Research from the Council of Undergraduate Research in Washington, D.C. Additionally, he serves as the Vice President of the Campus's Sustainability Club. As you can tell, he is a very impressive young man. The recipient of the James King Memorial Award goes to Stevie Disipio. We are extremely proud of Stevie and all of his hard work over the last four years. However, that is not all. In addition to being named the top student athlete on our campus, Stevie was also chosen to win the Penn State University Athletics Conference Male Egley Award. This is the highest honor for a male student athlete in the PSUAC across all sports. We are extremely proud of Stevie for this honor. He joins an elite group of Brandywine athletes who've won this award. We are so proud that no other campus has more Egley Award winners than Brandywine. That concludes this year's Brandywine Athletics All Sports Banquet. Congratulations to our award winners and to all of our student athletes for another successful year. We were on pace to have another record-breaking year for Brandywine Athletics. And although some opportunities were unfortunately cut short, we continue to celebrate all of the positives from the 2019-2020 academic school year. To our spring athletes whose season were cut short, I am hopeful that together we can use this situation as a spark. I see better days and a bright future for all of you. Whether your future has you back in a Brandywine uniform or it launches you into your adult working life, we will learn and we will grow from this experience. And I promise you, we will never take another day out on the field for granted. I wish all of you happiness and health over the summer and I'm eager to get everyone back together again in the fall. Regardless where this left you, returning or not, please note that you are a significant part of Brandywine's athletics history. To all of our returning student athletes, please mark your calendar for Sunday, August 16th for athletic orientation. To our graduates, we look forward to having you join our alumni team and seeing you at games in the future. Thank you for another amazing year, Brandywine Athletes.